वेलकम बैक एवरी वन लेट एस स्टार्ट विद लेक्चर वन लेट एस फर्स्ट लुक एट द ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ दिस कोर्स सो द ऑब्जेक्टिव इज टू अंडरस्टैंड सिमेट्री प्रेजेंट in molecules and correlate its role in chemistry so let us see how to do that so the course has two aspects one is symmetry another is group theory right now symmetry as we know it is present everywhere around us it is present in nature it is created by nature so for example uh, let's look at the cross section of okra the vegetable or it's also called as lady finger you must have seen that it is pentagon in shape and then nice five circles or five small pentagons arranged inside right so there is a lot of symmetry going on in there then uh, you can also see uh, the differences in flowers with four petals versus flowers with five petals right so our brain immediately tells us that this flower is different from another so we have been coded with the information that symmetry is present out there now what we are going to do in this course is we are going to tap that information and we'll try to visualize symmetry in molecules okay and then we'll try to group molecules based on symmetry once we do that we will try to combine the rules of group theory with the symmetry and then we will try to predict physical properties or explain physical properties of molecules now what is this group theory group theory is a mathematical concept of grouping things this is based on certain set of rules and uh, we will all see what the rules are to group things uh based on certain properties okay so let us look at uh let us move forward and let's actually first start with uh what we know so uh let's try to see the symmetry in mathematical functions so we are well aware of what is a even function and what is an odd function right so we will be using this concept of even function and odd function to uh, to be able to say or comment about symmetry in wave functions and operators which are mathematical functions so let us try to understand symmetry in wave functions and operators and see if we can solve any problem using okay. so uh in certain areas of chemistry you will be encountered with specifically spectroscopy so you will be encountered with something called as transition dipole do not worry about it 
as of now what is it we'll explain it later so transition dipole moment integral which is denoted by i and can be written as psi i uh, operator psi j d tau now a lot let's say a lot depends on whether i goes to zero or i does not go to zero and let's say if we can apply symmetry rules or symmetry in mathematical functions to be able to say whether i is going to be zero or not for a particular set of operators and wave functions so can we do that so let us look at uh, how to do that so let's say if i have a corollary based on rules of symmetry which says that if operator commutes with parity operator parity operator p so what is parity operator we will come to that and psi i slash psi j is even and other one is odd then i goes to zero so basically it is dealing with two conditions one is if o commutes with parity operator second condition is one of this function has to be even and the other one is odd then i goes to zero if both are even or both are odd then we can say that i does not go to zero but first it has to fulfill the condition that o has to commute with parity operator so now let us uh, look at first what is a parity operator So parity operator, it is denoted by p on any function inverts the sign of the variable. So if it's a function in one variable, it will be p on f x will give you p of minus of f x. If it's a function in let's say three variables, all three variables will have inverted sign x minus y minus z okay so it's like flipping a function through origin so it's very clear right now let's say uh, if we apply parity on different type of functions like even functions so even function f of x is equal to f of minus x so if we apply parity on even function it will be f of minus x which will be f of x right because for even function these two terms are equal so we can say here that f of x is symmetric with respect to parity Now let's see what happens if we apply parity on odd function. So let's say, let us consider an odd function gx. Okay. So definition of odd function tells you that g of x is equal to negative of g of negative x, right? Now let's say if we apply parity on g of x, what we will get is g of minus x and in turn we'll get minus of gx so if we get this kind of situation we say that gx is anti-symmetric with respect to parity 
now in certain conditions it's the function can be neither uh, even nor odd right it is not necessary so for example let's say if you take an example of fx is equal to e to the power minus ax now what happens if you apply f of minus x you get e to the power ax which is not equal to f of x which is not equal to minus of fx so in this case if we apply parity on e to the power minus ax we will get e to the power ax which is neither fx nor minus of fx so we can say that uh, this particular function is asymmetric with respect to parity this should be clear right this should be easy to grasp okay so now uh, let's come back to the the first condition so the first condition in the corollary says if operator commutes with parity so what do you mean by commutation so commutation is written in mathematics as op comma with square brackets it means mathematically o p minus p o okay so we have to uh, calculate this and if this thing goes to zero we say o commutes with p parity if this thing does not go to zero we say o does not commute with parity okay so to be able to calculate this we need to assume certain operator so let's assume d by dx and we also have to have some sort of a function so let us assume a function as x cube now let's calculate the first part this part and then we'll calculate this part okay. so op will be is equal to d by dx let us write the parity and the operator and the function x cube now whatever function comes at the right side will operate first okay so in this case the, or whatever operator comes on the right side will operate first so in this case the first will be this will be the first and this will be the second operation so parity we all know by definition x cube x has to be replaced with minus x which will give you minus x cube right so d by dx minus x whole cube this will be minus can come out d by dx of x cube and first derivative of x cube will be 3x square we have negative sign out so 3x square right? now let us calculate p o so in this case p d by dx x cube so now let's see uh, this will be your first operation and this will be your second operation okay so first operation derivative of x cube which will be 3x square and we have parity on this now if you replace x with minus x to apply parity so we will get minus x square which is equal to 3x square so notice that these two terms are not same right so that means op minus po is not equal to z right so o 
does not commute with p okay so our first condition of corollary is not fulfilled here so let us now look at another example let's take uh, o as second derivative b square by dx square let us keep the function as x cube you can choose different functions combination of different functions and operators uh, to visualize yourself so now let us calculate again op of fx this will be d square by dx square parity x cube now parity of x cube we have all seen minus x cube so minus comes out d square by dx square x cube okay? now first derivative will be 3x square second derivative will be 6x so we have negative of 6x now let's calculate e o fx we have parity on d square dx square on x cube now second derivative will be 6x within parity now x is replaced by minus x because of parity so you, what you will get is minus 6x so notice now that these two terms are same right so we can safely say that op minus po will be equal to 0 so we can say now o commutes with parity okay so first condition is fulfilled now let us uh, look at let us now set up an integral to see if we get a uh, combination of even and odd function in psi i and psi j so let's have our transition dipole moment integral as let's say you have sin x we know that t square by dx square operator commutes with parity we have just proved that now let's say we have a function e to the minus x square dx now we know that this thing so by looking at it if we can solve it it will be really cool right it, it looks a dreadful integral to solve but let's see uh, what are the symmetry rules it says so op commutation is zero so that means o commutes with p now this is a even function or odd function this is a odd function right now this is a even function so all the conditions of the corollary are uh, fulfilled that means we can safely say that this particular integral goes to zero okay so very easy now do it as a home exercise let us set up an integral with i is equal to cosine x d square by dx square e to the power minus ax dx okay now uh, we all know already that this thing d square by dx square operator commutes so this thing is already clear that operator commutes with parity now try to identify whether this is an even function or odd function do a little exercise try to identify if this is an even function or odd function and now based on symmetry rules can we say if i is equal to 0 i is not equal to 0 
और प्रॉब्लम कैन नॉट बी सॉल्व बेस्ड ऑन सिमिट्री और सिमिट्री आर्गूमेंट्स ओके सो ट्राई टू डू इट एंड कम बैक विद आंसर्स और कॉन्टैक्ट मी फॉर आंसर्स इफ यू हैव एनी डिफिकल्टी ओके दैट्स ऑल फॉर टूडे विल इन द नेक्स्ट वीडियो वी विल लुक एट सिमिट्री एलिमेंट्स एंड सिमिट्री ऑपरेशन थैंक यू